Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sara Bulfat. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safiya Palace the Sultan and ruler of Malaysia's Johor State, His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim ibn al Marhum Sultan Iskandar. His Majesty welcomed the guest, discussing with him the deep rooted bilateral cooperation and means of enhancing these relations. His Majesty the King and His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim then witnessed a show of purebred Bahraini Arabian horses that are renowned for their beauty, strength, and endurance. Bahrain has some of the best stables for purebred. Arabian horses registered at the World Arabian Horse Organization, the WAHO. His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim was briefed on the efforts to preserve their breeds and rare genetic qualities. For his part, the guest expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty, expressing admiration of the horse show. He praised the kingdom's keenness throughout history to preserve the rare horses.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa met today with a number of officials and scores of citizens during which he reviewed with them national issues and regional and international developments. His Royal Highness urged for stability to become the supreme goal, noting the current dangerous state of Arab countries and the challenges facing them. He stressed the importance of increasing awareness on the dangers and their aims of spreading chaos and division within societies, hailing Bahraini people and their national unity, community, cohesion and high sense of responsibility, which resulted in aborting attempts of destabilizing security and stability in the kingdom. His Royal Highness affirmed that the world is heading towards a stage of scientific and technological progress which must be directed to the service of humanity and the promotion of human solidarity to spread peace and security and enhance countries' abilities to achieve their development aspirations. The Prime Minister commended Bahraini people's devotion to the advancement and prosperity of the country, expressing pride in the kingdom's history and people. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of maintaining the values of convergence and communication for their importance in strengthening national unity and solidarity. He stressed the importance of the kingdom's heritage and history through acquainting future generations with Bahrain's cultural heritage, under urging to focus on the implemented projects and initiatives to meet the needs of the citizens. Her Royal Highness, wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, received a delegation today from the French Senate in presence of Shura Council Speaker Ali Al Saleh. Her Royal Highness highlighted the importance of the visit and confirmed the deep rooted relations binding the two countries. The delegation was briefed on the gains achieved for Bahraini women under the reform project of His Majesty the King and women's increasing participation in the decision making process. The delegation was also introduced to the progress of the SCW's work since its establishment and the steps of implementing the strategic plan to implement the national plan for Bahraini women's advancement in addition to effective cooperation mechanism with the legislative, executive and judicial branches. The French Senate's officials were also briefed on the efforts of the SCW in relation to development of the legislative system in addition to the services provided to women to ensure family stability most notably the process of issuing the unified family law and establishing family courts complex. The delegation commended Bahrain's experience in the field of women empowerment, expressing keenness to make use of the kingdom's work, considering the development of legislation and policies that support equal opportunities principle. They noted Bahraini women's advancement in various fields and the role of the SCW, led by Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika, in integrating women as an essential company component in national development programs. The personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, Zahana Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, delivered a speech to the participants of the Youth Forum on Peace Building, organized by the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs. Present were a number of ministers, ambassadors, advisors, members of the parliament, and state officials. His Highness conveyed the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the participants affirming the importance of the forum which comes at a critical time particularly with the increase in the number of terrorist acts supported by groups and countries his highness asserted that it is incumbent to put an end to such acts and to work towards development and prosperity in a peaceful environment sheikh nasser stated that the forum reinforces the role of the youth in process of peacemaking he added that the kingdom adopts peace as its constitution as it has hosted a number of 
forms on dialogue with the patronage of His Majesty the King, His Highness also affirmed the Kingdom's support to all regional and international coalitions to combat terrorism as well as Bahrain's respect to the sovereignty of countries and its policy of non-interference in the internal affairs of other nations. Sheikh Nasser said that choosing Manama as the headquarters of the Arab Court for Human Rights is considered an Arab and international acknowledgement of the Kingdom's outstanding records in human rights. He recalled the establishment of the King Hamad Center for Interfaith Dialogue and Peaceful Coexistence. His Highness praised the courage and strength of Iraqi Farida Abbas who managed to escape captivity from the terrorist ISIL group. Sheikh Nasser honored the participating speakers and media figures, hailing their role in directing the youth towards peacemaking. The first youth forum on peace building was held today under the patronage of His Royal Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. This is the first event of its kind in the kingdom and the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs staged the event to boost the youth's peace building capabilities in confronting terrorism and extremism in such a turbulent time. When we first started uh, planning for the event, we wanted an event that would bring together people from all walks of life. As you may know, we are a troubled region. and just having all these people come together to talk about peace and to talk about peacemaking kind of gives you hope. So we wanted to give that hope to our young people. So a lot of speakers from different, uh, from different walks of life, we have people from education, we have people from art, and then we have young people who are working together to achieve peace. We wanted to bring them, we want to bring all of them together just to talk about peacemaking and the process and the things they've gone through and what are the steps and the things that we could do in order to achieve peace. The Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs is currently um, managing the Peacemaking Forum for Youth and this is the first time that we've ever had this uh, forum in Bahrain. Uh, the reason why we're doing this is because of the turmoil, let's say, in, in the area and what we'd like to do is raise awareness to the youth about such issues like terrorism, peace, how we can actually build this kind of peace uh, in the region, especially Bahrain. Um, we're all affected by terrorism. Uh, it's like a... Uh, you know, it's, it, it has a ripple effect. So if it hurts one place, we're all affected. It affects currency, it affects education, it affects um, even just the population itself. So when one country is hit, another has a ripple effect and is affected by it. So what we'd like to do here is just raise awareness when it comes to such, um, let's say, dense issues uh, and raise awareness about these vital situations that are currently taking place in different countries in the world and really very close to Bahrain. Um, so what we'd like to do is, is get uh, the youth involved in such a forum to be able to understand things better, especially that they're the ones that are heading this movement in the next in the years to come. So we're just happy to be here today and we hope that the youth can, can get something out of it and hopefully be able to, to do something with uh, whatever information they get uh, this morning. 
The forum shed light on the notion of international peace, efforts of the participating countries in the peace-building area, as well as promoting the culture of tolerance, moderation and fairness in societies and preparing a plan to spread peace and combat extremism. I have to say that it's very inspiring to be at a forum where youth are being engaged in some of the most important and actually vital aspects of our lives. This is a time of immense challenge for youth and youth are our future and it is not only vital to engage them but to have them pave the way forward and my role here as a speaker is actually to talk about the role of education in preparing our youth for these challenges, equipping them with the tools that will allow them to lead the way in the future. And I came to Bahrain specifically for this conference um, because of the, uh, the goal behind it and the idea of promoting peace and tolerance. Um, and I really do think this is a step in the right direction to have this discussion and engage people in the different ways we can go about uh, discussing peace and uh, exhibiting it ourselves. The forum showcased the youth's capabilities for promoting the national development process and highlighted the kingdom's standing at the global level. The first Youth Peace Forum was a smashing success and is definitely a testament to the creativity and innovativeness of the people behind it and the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shogun Mohammed. Sultan and ruler of Malaysia's Johor State, His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim bin El Marhum Sultan Iskandar visited yesterday the Economic Development Board and was received by Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and senior officials. His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim listened to a brief from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's advisor for Economic Affairs, Dr. Hassan Fakhro, and the Minister of Finance, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, on the investment opportunities and fields of cooperation that aim to enhance the bilateral broadly relations. Representatives of the EDB then delivered a presentation on that matter. Sultan and ruler of Malaysia's Johor State praised the progress and development of the kingdom in all fields, especially the economic field. He added that Bahrain enhanced its status on the regional and international levels through attracting investments and business projects. Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health and Chairman of the Hikma Society for the Retired Lieutenant General Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa opened today the MENA Pensions Conference 2017, which discussed all aspects of pensions. More in this report with Habab Al Ghaffar. The 2017 MENA Pensions Conference focused on the sustainability of pension benefits through public-private partnerships, aiming to define the best vehicles and asset mixes for long-term investments in pension funds by discussing best implementations from different parts of the world. All over the world, actually, people living much more than they used to be, and they are still, you know, retiring at 60, 60 uh, years old, which is very early. 
and I think there is, uh, you know, the pension market, pension uh, arrangement in the whole world need to have a radical change. And I think that's one of the, uh, you know, conference that's going to think about it and may give some kind of ideas and uh, uh, opinions about, you know, how, what to do about it. The conference gathered investment experts from all over the world, sharing their rich experiences and valuable points of view about global pension outlook, the world's overview and pension status, challenges and demographics, labor markets, pension and social protection needs in Arab and Islamic countries, and how they can be addressed, highlighting aspects enhancing pension sustainability. Moreover, they discussed pension technology and fintech models to define how pension administrators can engage in the future and benefit from innovative solutions and advanced distribution models. We have over 600 delegates participating, representing uh, in excess of 15 countries. And uh, we have five sessions uh, before lunch and after lunch. We have three uh, workshops uh, going in parallel. Uh, the key theme today is what are the advantages of public-private partnership in the space of pensions? Every reform starts with, uh, okay, what do we need to change? What is happening? Uh, awareness. Uh, so for the, the first uh, line of thoughts I heard here is like, we are aware and we want, we want to change. And, and that is already massive, right? So if the willingness is there and, and also the, the road towards it, and I talk, I've seen a lot of a solution out uh, being talked about individuality, doing it yourself, uh, then it's only then that we have to fill in and how should that work. Three workshops tackled important controversial issues such as the possibility of introducing pensions for expats in the GCC to make labor markets more equitable and attractive. In addition to managing employee savings and governance challenges, also if SMEs can offer adequate employee benefits comparable to large firms to improve the employee value proposition. All aspects of pension from design and scheme administration to operational technology and asset management are tackled today in one of the largest gatherings in the pension industry. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa deputized his advisor Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa to attend the 13th AMA International University graduation ceremony under His Royal Highness's patronage. Present were the Philippines President's Special Envoy to the Gulf and the Middle East Region Honorary President of AMA Education System and Chairman of AMA International University Dr. Amabel Guelez, the Minister of Education Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, officials, members of the diplomatic corps and parents. Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa conveyed the congratulations of His Royal Highness the Premier to the graduates and their families and his wishes of further success and progress. Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa praised the continuous development of education in Bahrain which reflects the support of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister who has considered the development of education a priority in the government's work plan as a pillar of comprehensive development to boost the contributions of the alumni in the nation's progress and prosperity. He noted the kingdom's keenness on keeping up with the latest international developments in the strategies and programs of education. He added that allowing investments in education at all levels contributes to creating generations capable of effectively participating in the march of development of Bahrain. Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa commended the efforts of AMA International University Bahrain in developing the quality of higher education through providing an excellent scientific and academic example. Dr. Amabel Guelez, who, who chairs the AMA IUB Board of Trustees, has expressed his sincere gratitude and appreciation of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his kind patronage of the graduation ceremony, lauding his diligence on boosting the teaching and learning process that contributes in Bahrain's comprehensive organized urbanization and development of human resources as the basis for all progress.
Southern Governor Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa opened today the Southern Governorate Employment Fair, which was organized by Rafah Sports Club in presence of the Minister of Labor and Social Development under Secretary for Labor Affairs Sabah Dosiri. The fair aims to increase employment opportunities for the national job seekers at the private sector enterprises, which where they will offer job opportunities at reasonable salaries. The fair is in line with the Labor and Social Development Ministry keenness on increasing job seekers chances of finding suitable jobs and at the same time enabling companies to meet their needs from national competencies the fair also comes to meet the demands of the people of the southern governorate and provide them with job opportunities that will benefit the national economy and raise the competitiveness of bahraini job and training seekers the Representatives Council held its ninth session today, chaired by Council Speaker Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah. The Council approved the Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee's report relating to Decree Law No. 28 of 2017 to amend certain provisions of Decree Law No. 19 for the year 1976 concerning decorations, which aims to introduce a new type of decorations under the name of Medal of Power, which is granted to officers and members of the Bahraini Defense Force on the occasion of its 50th anniversary. The Council also approved the report of the Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee concerning Decree Law No. 37 of 2017 amending some provisions of Decree Law No. 14 for the year 1971 on documentation, which aims to improve the level of government services related to documentation to address the delay issue experienced by the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments. During the session, the Council reviewed letters received from the government and decided to refer them to the relevant committees, which relate to a number of draft laws. The Council approved the requests of the Foreign Affairs Committee, the Defence and National Security Committee, along with the Environment and Public Utilities Committee, concerning extending the submission period of reports by those committees for a period of four weeks. The Council agreed to postpone draft laws to an upcoming session and decided to discuss the request made by a number of MPs to clarify the government's policy on the accumulation of rainfall annually during winter season in the presence of the Minister of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning. Thank you.